Thank you for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. My presentation today will focus on three types of pre-enda meetings for complex products, the control correspondence, and product-specific guidance is part of the pre-enda program. I will also address the pre-enda meeting request, format, process, and the meeting package. Dr. Tyner from the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality will follow my presentation on her presentation on the PNDA program Tip for Success. The PNDA program was established under the PDUFA reauthorization for fiscal year 2018 to 2022, also known as the PDUFA II. The goal is uh, to clarify regulatory expectations for prospective and applicant and to facilitate the development and approval for complex generic drug products through early engagement with the FDA. There are three types of pre-enda meetings, product development meetings, to submission meetings, and mid review cycle meetings. For Gudufa 2 commitment letter, a complex product may contain one form of complexity or it may contain complexity in multiple categories. They are active pharmaceutical ingredients, complex formulation and dosage form, complex route of delivery, complex drug and device combination. In the table, there are examples of drug products for each complex product type. Other products with complexity or uncertainty, such as opioid drug products, with a few deterrent properties are also considered complex due to high public priority and concern. As mentioned earlier, the pre and program for complex generic drug products compose three types of meetings to assist the prospective and applicant before they submit an ENDA to the FDA. The product development meeting involves scientific exchange on specific issues or questions, and the FDA will provide targeted advice and feedback on an ongoing and our programs. This meeting may be requested anytime during the product development stage. The pre-submission meeting is another type of pre enda meeting. This meeting is mainly discuss the format and content of an ENDA to be submitted within six to 12 months. In addition, FDA can give advice that support efficient review and improve the chain of first cycle approval. Although the proposed content of the ENDA will be discussed, FDA will not provide a substantive review of any data or study report during this meeting. In the link below is a guidance for ENDA submission. Lastly, mid-review cycle meeting occur at midpoint of the review plus 30 days. This meeting is scheduled automatically by the regulatory project manager of the OGD with and the applicant prior to product development and or pre-submission meeting. At the mid-review cycle meeting, the FDA will provide an update on the status, discuss concerns, and also the next step forward. For Gudufa 2, there are two types of control correspondence. FDA will review and respond within 60 calendar days for the standard control correspondence. As for complex control correspondence, it's within 120 calendar days or less. For both control correspondence, ensure it should include the question such as generic drug development, clinical protocol, and alternate bioequivalent approach uh, for the listed relevant for the listed relevant listed drugs. There, if you have any question, refer to the link below. Lastly, for clarification of the ambiguity. FDA will review and respond within 14 calendar days. The 
what are specific guidance or PHG describe the agency current thinking and expectation on how to develop the generic drug product that are topically equivalent to the specific wafer listed drugs? For general question about the PHG, please use the control correspondent process. For alternative, uh, alternative bioequivalent approach that not cover in the PHG, the applicant can use either complex control correspondent or the PNDA meeting process. If no PHG for the complex product, FDA must grant a meeting to the PNDA meeting process. There are nearly 1,700 PHG available as of February of this year. Moving on to submitting the meeting request, there are a few administrative steps that require your attention. First, request and obtain the PSI and the number that do not expire. Second, submit the meeting request via the portal. For both product development and pre-submission me pre -submission meeting, ensure clear and specific questions are supported by appropriate data, outline the unit, novel, or complex aspect of end of submission presented at the meeting. Lastly, the meeting package should be complete to provide sufficient detail of information and data to meet the intended meeting objective. In regard of the format and content, please refer to the draft guidance here to prepare and submit the meeting request and the show share meeting package. The meeting package should be organized according to the proposed agenda and objective, number the page, list appropriate table of content, references, Ensure all questions are grouped by discipline and clearly number without sub-question. In addition, all questions must be followed by corresponding justification, rationale, or data to support discussion with no limit to the number of questions. This is our internal pre and meeting process and is broken down into three stages. Stage one is stage one is 30 calendar day for from the receipt of the pre and meeting request. Starting in fiscal year 2020, on October 1st of this year, FDA will have 14 calendar day to grant or deny the meeting request. During this period, the, the super office of OGB and OPQ will do their assessment independently and in parallel on the grant and deny decision. Moving on to stage two, typically 120 calendar day or less, the OGD and OPQ staff will continue to accept the meeting package, prepare the preliminary comment, and meet with the prospective and the applicant. Finally, on stage three, typically 30 calendar day or less, during this period, the meeting, the official meeting minutes will be sent and the PNDA meeting project will then be closed. A part of the, our internal process, specifically in, during stage two, the meeting project manager from the Office of Resource and Standards will be assigned as a point of contact. The FDA staff of OGD and OPQ will set the meeting package request the console and send information, information requests if needed. The prospective and the applicant must respond to any or all of the information requests via the portal.
Lastly, FDA will send a preliminary written comment at least five calendar days prior to the meeting. The pre and the meeting for complex products is critical for achieving a productive discussion and or exchange of information. Discussion should be in the order of priorities and focus on the question that need clarification. The formal meeting is typically one hour. On the meeting day, the FDA staff, representatives, and experts will participate in the meeting. They will also listen to the applicant presentation, provide feedback, and interactively discuss the written response to the question. Keep in mind, new data or question not presented in the original meeting packet will not be discussed. After the meeting concludes, the official meeting minutes will be issued within 30 calendar days. If the applicant would like the FDA to consider their meeting summary, they must do so by submit within seven calendar days of the meeting conclusion via the portal. The p and meeting project will then be closed. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Good morning, good afternoon to our colleagues online in Europe. Um, now that Christine has given us some processes and procedures for the pre ender program, I'm going to give some tips about how you can make the most out of your pre ender meetings, as well as provide some lessons learned on our side in that first year of GDUSA 2. And I am also going to have trouble with the clicker. It's going to work. There it is. Okay. Um, so in the first year of Wadufa 2 for the pre ANDA program, uh, we had 83 total pre ANDA requests. Um, of those, 48 of those meetings were granted. And then of those 48 meetings that were granted, 13 meetings were canceled by the sponsor's request because we did such a good job on writing the responses that there was no need to further meet. We consider that a win, and that's something that we actually track in our metrics as a good job for us. By far, the most, uh, in terms of the types of complexity, we're seeing most for uh, complex routes of delivery, as well as the complex combination product. Although we did see throughout the um, year different submissions in all the different categories of complexity. On the right hand side, we have, we've been tracking what we're seeing in terms of the submissions of these uh, meeting packages, as well as what we're granting and what we're denying. And we particularly look at when we're denying, if we're seeing an increase in den denials, why we're denying them. And so that's so we can actually go back to you all and make sure that uh, if we're seeing a common problem, we can address it here so you can have your meeting accepted on the first round. By far, the most common reason for denial ooh, is an incomplete meeting package that there was no data or there wasn't sufficient data for us to adequately address and answer your questions. And you're going to get bored of me saying this, but this really is why we've been designing the majority of the packages. And this makes it easier for us to be able to help you in answering those questions. We also had somewhere that the product was not complex and actually didn't fall into the, the uh, pre ender program as defined in the Gadufa 2 letter. Early in the process, so within the first couple of months, we did have some denials based on the, the submission, the, the type of meeting that was chosen, whether it be a PDEV and a PSUB. And we'll go in a little bit about that. Um, but we've actually seen that decline over the last year, the last couple of months. That's just because people are getting more familiar with the program and understand more about what those meetings are. Um, some of them are denied because they should go through a control correspondence instead, or that there is a PSG already available and, again, does not qualify under the pre ender program as defined in GDUFA 2. Helpful tips. All right, so I'm going to have a couple of slides that are somewhat random, but have a lot of different tips that are things that we have seen coming through in the last year 
where there's been some confusion or where we hope we can clarify. Again, please provide sufficient data to review questions in the medium package. The more data we have, the more complete we can actually respond to these questions. This is especially true in those product development packages where you're having questions about your study designs and what have you. If you have a Q1, Q2 question where Q1 and Q2 is not required by regulation or is recommended in a PSG, if you want to know where to submit that question, this is the avenue to submit that question. So please submit a meeting request. Make sure it's very obvious that that's um, the question you have and that you have your BE approach for the specific formulation. If you know you are not Q1, Q2, please include your justification. That goes back to providing sufficient data for us to evaluate that question. Helpful tips, submitting devices. By far, the biggest tip we can give is please read the comparative analysis guidance first. It has a lot of great resources in there. It gives a lot of information and typically answers a lot of the questions that we're seeing. The next tip is uh, if you have a device and you want to submit that device, think about how and when you want to submit that device. Is it going to be part of this pre and a request or as a control? And what stage do you need to or want to um, have those questions addressed, um, either while you're in the process of designing or the actual final design? Am I a pre-sub or pre-dev meeting? Product development meetings are for discussion of specific scientific issues. This is going to be early phase in your development process. So not the study design after it's been done and you're ready to submit, but the proposed study design, maybe some preliminary data, looking at alternative approaches and additional study expectations. Pre-submission meetings are much further along in the development. So you know, benchmark is you're about six to 12 months before the submission, you're gonna be ready to submit that ANDA. A good rule of thumb is if you've had, if you have your stability batches started, you're probably gonna be looking at a, a pre-sub meeting. The pre-sub meetings, you're discussing the format and the content of the ANDA. It's not a filing review. We won't be able to address those questions during the meeting. Am I a control correspondence or product development meeting? So, this is one of the lessons learned, um, that there was a lot of confusion on that. So you saw a slide already with Christine. Um, I have a slide, and there's gonna be a whole talk right after me devoted to this. So I'm going to very rapidly go through this slide. And just, I guess, highlight that the pre-ANDA meetings are best for multidisciplinary questions, um, whereas controls are usually for single questions or a small group of closely related questions. But again, you're gonna get a lot more information right after I finish talking. All right, so. Once you're combining your meeting package, the meeting package is going to have questions, and it's going to have data that helps justify those questions or helps explain what you're asking. So some examples of useful questions that we have seen. So not, please review the protocol. What you want to do is give the protocol, give preliminary um, data with that if you have it, and submit specific questions that are regarding that protocol. Not what tests we should do, so not necessarily a fishing exercise, but show what tests you have done and justify why those tests are being done um, with appropriate justification and see if there's any gaps. Same thing, not in my PK study acceptable. Instead, show the PK study, give us the data, um, identify the points of uncertainty that you have in that study, because if you're asking the question, you have some uncertainty somewhere. Um, so be specific in those questions, be specific in the data you've submitted to us, and then ask a specific question. Again, this is all so that we can better address those questions for you. Um, not is my specification acceptable? Again, ask a specific question about your product and the understanding of how you're doing the control, how you're measuring them um, with the data associated with it, and then ask that specific question with that. All right, so we actually took some of the pre ANDA questions that we got over the past year and blinded them. And so these are examples of good pre ANDA questions. So are there additional critical material attributes or critical process parameters that the FDA feels we should address? Now on the balance, that doesn't look like, that looks like a fairly broad question, but behind that was like 20 pages of the data and the justification of their development package. So this was a question that we thought was good. Um, we go down to the third one. This is a very specific question. Again, we had a lot of background in terms of the product development, in terms of the methodology, um, and the data associated with that package. And then the sponsor asked, 
does the agency agree with the approach we designed to compare the overall particle size distribution in the RLD by means of this specific technique and this other specific technique? And they showed some of the, the questions they had associated with that. So again, very specific and questions that had data associated with it. All right, I have three questions, and these are the, the bad questions, or the questions that we, we would have more challenges with. Um, the first one is looking about uh, if the test would be sufficient to show crystalline purity, a lot of these would be considered review issues. Does the FDA agree with proposed manufacturing processes and controls? Do they agree with this specification? Um, is this impurity within reason? All of these would be review issues. We aren't actually able to address them during the review of the, the pre and the meeting. So again, instead of asking questions like this, you want to be looking at your data package, seeing where you have the questions, um, or where you have considerations, or you feel that there may be gaps, and then um, ask questions specifically towards that with your data, pointing out where you have those, those, um, those considerations. All right, so lessons learned on our side from the pre and program. Um, Run-on questions tend to be somewhat difficult for us to parse out, especially since many of these questions tend to be very multidisciplinary. So uh, short questions that are grouped by discipline is not required, but is awesome for us. Uh, provide adequate supporting information for each question. Again, you're going to get bored of me saying that, but that really is the reason why we've had a lot of challenges in that first year. That adequate supporting information prevents the pre and from being denied, and allows the FDA to provide the best response. It also avoids us coming back and saying, hey, we can answer that question, but only if you give us this extra piece of data. So it, it gives a little bit more time, and it gives us a little bit more robustness in our responses. We do have points of contact. Um, these are all hyperlinked. You all have the slides either available now or will be shortly. Um, please feel free to ask for help. We're happy to give it. And the main takeaways that I'd like to have, both for Christine's talk and mine, use the portal to submit your meeting requests, read the guidance that we have on formal meetings between FDA and ANDA applicants, choose the correct pathway, product development, pre-submission, or control correspondence, ask specific questions with data, oh, it came there, provide sufficient information to address your question, and we do like we look forward to working with you. This is a very fun program. We get to deal with a lot of interesting scientific questions. Um, so we're, we're happy to discuss with you and look forward to talking to you in the future.